today we are at Mount Stromlo Observatory and we will be observing rainbows by making your very own spectroscope. Hi, my name is Ella. I'm a final year PhD student in astronomy and astrophysics at the Australian National University. A spectroscope is an instrument that breaks up light into its individual colours. A glass prism is the simplest form of a spectroscope, but glass prisms are heavy and unwieldy. Today, we'll be making a much more lightweight spectroscope. We use spectroscopes within telescopes to observe astronomical objects, like the observations that we do at Siding Spring Observatory on the AAG. You will need scissors, sticky tape, and this spectroscope template printed on a piece of paper. Note that this is actually double-sided, and this will be making the body of your spectroscope. This side here is black in order to block out all of the light. Because you want to block out light, you can use slightly thicker paper for the body of the spectroscope in order to get better results. We are going to be observing light. Do not observe anything that you cannot look at normally with your eyes. So do not observe things like the sun directly, do not observe lasers directly. You will also need the diffraction grating. This is actually where all of the magic will be happening. Note that you will be looking through this, so try to avoid getting fingerprints on it, try to avoid bending it, folding it, or anything like that. Any blemishes on this will show up on the spectrum that you're looking at. First, cut out the template following the solid black lines. This is the cutout template. You want to cut out a very thin slit here. This will allow light from the source that you're observing through the spectroscope. Whatever shape your slit has, your spectrum will also have. So you want this to be as straight as possible. So the way that you can cut out this slit is by folding the piece of paper and then making a straight snip and then moving your scissors ever so slightly to the side. You want a very thin slit, remember? And then making another straight cut. And then removing the paper in the middle. You can see the two straight cuts here. The rectangle is where your diffraction grating will sit. Cut this out as well. Now, fold away from you on the dash lines and fold towards you on the dash dotted lines. Now that you have done this, turn this into a box shape and sticky tape it down. The thing to remember about this is that you don't want to let any other light through this body of the spectroscope. So try to make this as light proof as possible. The orientation does matter. You want to hold this up to the light and rotate it until you see two blobs of rainbow up and down, not to the left and right. The other way to tell the orientation of the diffraction grating is to hold it up to your spectroscope and look through it. You should see a very thin rainbow, and if you rotate by 90 degrees, you should see a very thick rainbow. The thick rainbow is the correct orientation. Now with the correct orientation, cut a piece of the diffraction grating that is slightly larger than this rectangle. Now, stick it to the body of the spectroscope. Remember that we'll be looking through this, so try not to get too much sticky tape through the middle or fingerprints. You have now made your own spectroscope. Light will come through this slit, go through the body, hit the diffraction grating, which will then turn into a rainbow, which you will then see if you look through the diffraction grating. Now we'll be using the spectroscope to break apart light into its individual colors and we'll be using this to observe different light sources in order to investigate their properties. If you want, you can also place the spectroscope over your smartphone camera and take some photos of the rainbows that you observe. You might need to change the exposure and focus settings in order to get a clear photo. Now let's look at some rainbows. We've moved to a darker room in order to control the ambient light so you can observe spectra better. Light bulbs contain gas inside it. When you turn it on, it heats up this filament which then heats up the gas such that this gas is emitting light. You can use the spectroscope to observe this light and see that it emits all the colors from red to blue. There are different types of light bulbs. There's warm light bulbs and there's cool light bulbs. 
the difference is how much of each color is emitted. Check this out for yourself. When observing different light bulbs, take note of which colors are darker and which colors are brighter. Pause here and use your spectroscope to observe different types of light bulbs and see what you find. These should be different for different types of light bulbs. With a cooler light, you should see that the blue color is a bit more stronger and the red color is a bit more dimmer. This is in contrast to a warmer light color where the blue light should be a bit dimmer and the red light should be a bit stronger. Neon lights work in a similar way to light bulbs. However, the gas inside of this light bulb is only a single element. Each element has a unique set of colors that it will emit and the combination of all of these colors is then the color that you see this light. By observing which colors are emitted, we can tell which element is inside of the light. This is what we do in astronomy, in order to tell the chemical composition of astronomical objects like stars, nebulae, supernovae, and more. Now we'll turn the lights off so we can better see the neon lights. Like we did before, we'll take the spectroscope, focus the slit on the neon light, and look through the diffraction grating. The particular element that I have is neon, and neon is actually emitting light in red, orange, yellow, and a little bit of green, but these are actually distinct lines, and this is what is known as an emission spectrum. Compared to earlier when we saw a full rainbow, now we are only seeing distinct lines. Now let's try taking a look at helium. Helium also has distinct lines, but these are actually at different colors. Instead, helium compared to neon actually has some lines in the blue. Mercury is a blue color. And you see mercury as a blue color because when you look at the spectra through the spectroscope, you'll see that there are actually no red lines being emitted. It's just purple, blue, green, and yellow. So the combination of all of these colors added together turns into the blue light that you see from mercury neon lamp. You might not have access to neon lamps, but there should be plenty of neon street signs, which you can take a look at through your spectroscope. Until now, we've been observing things that emit light. However, stars don't behave like this. Instead, stars behave more like a bright light source, shining light through a cool layer of gas. This is because stars in their cores are producing nuclear fusion, which is actually emitting light. This light then propagates through what is a cool layer of the atmosphere, which actually absorbs some of the light we can use the colors that are missing from the stellar spectrum in order to tell us which elements are inside of the star. We can also use how much of that color is missing to tell us how much of that element is inside of the star. Now we'll be looking at what does the light look like when it shines through food coloring in order to see which colors get absorbed and which colors get left through. We'll be doing this both with red food coloring and blue food coloring. Now let's turn the lights off again so we can observe just the torch. You want to shine the torch light through the food coloring and then place the spectroscope and observe what the light looks like. You might want to get a second person to help you out with the torch. Through the red food coloring, we can only really see red light being let through and a tiny amount of yellow, green, and maybe blue, not really. From the LED light from before, we know that it should be shining in all colors, including blue light. But through the red food coloring, we cannot see any blue light at all. So this means that the red food coloring is letting through red light, but it's actually absorbing the blue light. This is in contrast to the red food coloring, where the blue food coloring lets through the blue light and a bit of green, but absorbs all of the red light. Now you can play around with how dark you get the colors. For example, diluting the red food coloring and diluting the blue food coloring as well. You can also combine these two together and look through two different food colorings and see what the light then looks like. We were just talking about stars. Now we'll be observing the most important star of all, the sun. The sun is very bright. We cannot look at it directly with our eyes our spectroscope or our normal telescopes. Instead, to observe the sun, 
will be reflecting it on something else and observing that reflection. In this case, we'll be using a piece of white paper to direct the sunlight onto the paper, and then we can observe the piece of paper to see sunlight. We'll be placing the paper down, and then we'll get the sun reflecting off the piece of paper into the spectroscope. Here we can see the sunlight being split into its individual colors of the rainbow, all the way from red through to blue. You've observed four different light sources with us. Now you can go and observe other light sources by yourself, things like LEDs and computer screens, see what colors they break into and why. Thanks for watching and have fun playing with your new spectroscope.